Hey everyone, what is happening? Mr. Waterman here, and we're going to be talking about solving equations using inverse operations. Well, what does the variable equal? Well, let's take a look at uh, an equation, and we're going to find out what the variable does equal, all right? So that's the question we need to be asking ourselves. If we have a question right here, we've got 7x plus 12 equals 40. And what we're doing is we're asking what does our variable of x equal. So to solve for a variable, we use the reverse operations. And this is kind of like using bed mass backwards. That's pretty cool. So we ask ourselves, well, what do we need to do to get x by itself? There's a few things first. So using bed mass forward, we'd go brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, adding, and subtraction. Well, when we go backwards, we start with subtraction or addition. So we go and use bed mass backwards, and we do the opposite. So to get 7x plus 12 equals 40 by itself, well, we're going to subtract 12. And whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other, minus 12. And so we get 7x equals 28. Next, we, we ask ourselves, what's happening to x? Well, we're multiplying it by 7. So what's the opposite of multiplication? Well, it's division. So we're going to divide by 7. And once again, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. And we get 7 divided by 7 is 1. It is not 0. It is just 1. And we're left with x equals 4. Now you can put this variable back in and you can say, well, 7 times 4 is 28 plus 12 is 40. So yes, it works out. Okay. Well, we can also do the exact same thing with something that we talked about last class, the arrow method. And what we have is we ask ourselves, what is happening to x? And it could be any variable that we're talking about. So first off, let's start with 7x plus 12 equals 40. We just did this question, but we know the answer now. So let's go and do the arrow method. Well, what's happening to x? So we start with our variable, and we ask ourselves, well, what's happening to it? Well, it's being multiplied by 7. 7 times x is 7x. And then what else are we doing to it here? We're, we're adding 12 to it. So we're going to add 12. And what do we get? Well, we get 7x plus 12. And what does that equal? Well, it equals 40. And so we go 40. We do the exact opposite of what we did when we went to the right. Now we go like this. And we subtracted 12. That's the opposite of 12. And we get 28. Now we do the exact opposite of multiplying by 7. So we divide by 7. And we get 4 and x equals 4. So that's our arrow method. I would like you to try to solve for x in this next equation, please. Remember, you do need to do bed mass backwards. Okay? Take a little break, try that out, and I'd like you to turn over to the next page, please. And we're going to balance equations with a variable on both sides of the equal sign. So you can use another strategy to solve for our variable. Pretend that the equation is like a teeter-totter and, and the equal sign is the fulcrum. This means that each side has to be balanced. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our variables on one side and our constants on another. Okay. So what does this look like? Well, we've got a bin on this side, and we've got a bin on this side, and it's kind of on a teeter-totter, and there's our fulcrum. There's our equal sign. So we've got 12 x's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and we have 6 over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we have 7 constant and we have 9 over here and that teeter-totter is our 
balance. That's our equal sign. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to bring over our constants to one side and our variables to the other. So let's choose our variables. We're going to get them. We're going to take these six and we are going to cancel them out with six over here. Okay, so those actually cancel out. When we bring these over, we've got to do the opposite sign. So it would be minus 6x. So we went 12x minus 6x and we cancel out, cancel out. Okay, and we do the opposite with our positive 7. We're going to take away 7. So we've got to take away 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we've got to take away 7 from this side. And we're left with just 2. So over here we've got 6x is equal to just 2. And we're going to divide by 6, divide by 6, and we get x to equal 2 over 6, which equals 1 over 3. I'd like you to try this one on your own, and uh, we will see you in class.